right, Blade Smiths, congratulations. You've made it to the second round of this competition, and now it's time to take those tempered blades and make them fully functional by attaching handles to them. A, a lot of weapons are defined by their handle. Good luck, Blade Smiths. Your two hours starts now. All right, these guys are off to the races. I came in with an edge on, but that edge doesn't matter. I got to remove all that mild steel can that was left, and I got to get this down to a good solid carbon steel edge. Matt shape and handles. He's already got the pummel and guard on there. Yeah. When you make a knife for this kind of competition, everyone pays attention to the blade because that's where it's going to break. That's where it's going to snap. You got to make it a strong blade, sharp blade. Everything in their mind is from the guard forward. I pick antler because there's an outside layer that's extremely tough, extremely hard. He's going to grind right into the right pit. Right into the pit. And the pit is just like bony, spongy material. It's not strong. It looks like a sponge. Yeah. Everything seems to be going great, and then all of a sudden, there it is. I got into the soft part of the antler. What the crap am I going to do now? If I start another handle, there's no way I'm going to be able to finish. So I just got to roll with it and figure out a way to address this. My best bet is to fill it as full of epoxy as I could get and then coat the entire outside. The handle often decides what that weapon is. Now, how thick of a coat do you put on this? In something like this, to get it a sixteenth of an inch in is pretty good. Yeah. Now, Mark had a pretty complete blade with an edge at the end of the first round, but he had a weird kick to his tang. As I'm grinding this tang, I just need to make sure that there's enough meat left in that tang and handle to where it makes for a strong knife. So the, the handle design dictates how you're going to fight with it. That's a big, heavy blade hanging out there, and I don't want it coming apart with the judges trying to do their tests on it. I know I've learned a lot about handle making by destroying other people's handles. <laughs> I've got everything ready to fit on. I'm ready to epoxy this thing together. And I'm screwing this butt cap on, and I go to tighten it up. Uh, 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 wait, wait, wait. Damn it. And the all thread breaks. Ah. And that just snapped free. Yeah. I'm just floored. I don't know what to do at this point, except take it all back apart and get some parts fixed back on it fast. I'm scared of this one. <laughs> I am really trying to make this blade as smooth and beautiful as possible. Woohoo! I've got to fix a warp that these guys don't have. They're already working on handles, and I'm not. So I've got to just hustle. In this competition, especially, you know what people do is they go and do the first round making the blade. When it comes to the handle making round, they're spending so much time trying to fix the blade that they forget the handle. And look, you've become like the handle mangler. <laughs> I mean, how many kills have you had based on the handle? It's in our testing that it shows that if you don't do the handle properly, it falls apart. I'm going to try clamping the blade between uh, angle iron putting heat to it and torquing on the spine where it's bent, start straightening it out. I'm keeping my edge in the water cool so that way I do not lose the temper in the edge of it. It took me way longer to get the warp out than I thought it would. What is happening right now? Why is he so far behind? Well, he wasted 45 minutes trying to straighten that blade, and then there's been a real persnickety fit up with a guard, and with this amount of time left, it's good enough, good enough, good enough, get it in there. The clock is worrying me really bad right now. It's ticking down fast. I am way behind the ball right now. I got to get the handle glued up, end cap, bring it over to the grinder and start refining everything. And then I got to get an edge. I'm just like, screw it. I got to help this guy. Come on, brother. You're making me nervous. We've got Mark and Scott trying to find the right tap for his blade. Right here, right here. There you go. I guess I'm just the kind of Thank person you. that that's just my mentality is just don't leave anybody behind. Check your threads. Is it different? So check no, it's your the same, it's the same, it's the same. Okay. Now we've got Matt coming over to throw in his two cents oh, yeah. to give everybody a hand. That's awesome. He's got the right size hole with the right size tap. And now's the time. Don't cheat it by. Oh, See? man! The tap snapped off. Oh, what am I going to do? My first thought process is punch another hole. Get that grinder, man. You can do it. One minute, Blade Smiths. I'm going as fast as I can. Make sure you get that edge, dude. I need to etch this, or I'm going home right now, because that's a parameter. Look at that. Matt getting him ready just to dunk it in. 15 seconds. There you go, dude. You got this. 10 seconds. Get it in the edge. There you go. Oh, yes. Man. Yes. Five. Yeah, four, buddy. Four. Three. Right. Yeah. Two. Oh, man. One. Blade Smith, stop what yeah, you're doing. Just got to pull your blade out of that acid. This second round of competition is on. Oh. Woo! Good comeback, though, man. Good comeback. Good job, man. Way to hang in there to the end, man. Thank you, guys. If it wasn't for the other Smiths actually stepping in and helping me, I wouldn't have made it. But inside, I'm really pissed off because I know I could have done way better. Blade Smiths, welcome to the strength test. 
a dreaded, threaded rod chop. To test the strength and durability of your edge, as well as the overall construction of your blades, I'll be bashing them into these threaded rods. We're gonna use this test to figure out who comes out unscathed and who gets screwed. <laughs> Matt, you're up first, you ready? Let's get it. Well, Matt, your blade's all still in one piece, but uh, unfortunately, your edge has split open to the point where there's a piece of brass stuck inside. It is still straight. It is still in one piece, but there's, there's no denying that that split in the seam right there. Okay. Mark, you seeing what I'm up to? What are you thinking? Make it or break it. All right, one or the other. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Rods, baby. Yeah, you did. First one right through. All right, Mark. Blade's still in one piece. It's still straight. There's uh, definitely two areas of chip out right here. And in between the chip out, there's some roll. Uh, all being said, it, it held up pretty well. I mean, this is a brutal test. And it, it really shows the strength of your blade. Well done. All right. Good job, bud. Whew. All right, Scott, you see me. You ready for this? Yeah, give her hell. All right. All right, Scott, for a beefy chef's knife, this thing held up really well. Uh, your blade is still straight. The edge took some flatting in spots. Uh, it's not chipped, it's not rolled, it's just kind of mushed in by the littlest bit. I think you knocked it out of the park. Thank you. Thanks, man. Thank you. All right, guys, I'll give you the dug. Yeah. All right, bladesmiths, this is the sharp that says the fabric loom slice. Now, a sharp blade should cut through the yarn. A dull edge or a jagged edge, we just pull at it. Matt, you're up first. You ready for this? Let it rip. That tip had some edge on it, bro. All right, Matt. First up, the front part here is sharp. On the first cut, it cut the yarn nicely. On the drag slice, it did cut initially, but then on the third one, where you're really exposing it to this particular edge, it just dragged through it. But overall, sir, you will cut. Yeah, fantastic. Good job. Yeah, good job. All right, Mark, your turn. So you ready? Let her cut. Let's do that. mark the front is sharp even parts of the blade opens it up it cuts easily it will cut yes all right scott your turn sir you ready yep let's do this All right, Scott, let's talk about your blade here. Your edge, it's not very sharp. It did cut a little bit. On the draw slice, slightest. It even pulled it all the way down. Your blade, sir, will cut a little. Thank you. All right, gentlemen. Bladesmith leaving the four jizz. Matt, your blade didn't make the cut. Well, Matt, your blade suffered some serious damage on the strength test. It's literally splitting in half at the edge, and that in turn impaired its ability to cut well on this sharpness test, and it's for that reason we're setting you home. Okay. I understand. Matt, please surrender your blade. Right now, I feel disappointed I didn't make it, but at the same time, I feel great because I did make it this far. 
I think my blade actually ended up splitting because I didn't clean my needles and bolts, and those didn't weld together good enough and set me up ultimately for this failure. When I get home and fire up my press, canister is going to be the very first thing on my list to start working on.